published, 420 EDT, April 7, 2019, updated, 751 EDT, April 7, 2019 Theresa May was last night poised to mount a humiliating climb down over a customs union as the price of winning Labour support for her Brexit deal with an additional Boris lock to prevent the possibility of a future, hardline Eurosceptic Tory leader tearing up the deal. According to senior sources, Tory negotiators have told Labour that the government would accept UK membership of a customs union, a red line for Brexiteers, but on condition that they call it something else to avoid inflaming anger among Eurosceptic Conservatives. And it emerged the PM has offered Jeremy Corbyn a lock mechanism, which would prevent any future pro-Brexit Prime Minister such as Boris Johnson from unraveling the deal by having it written directly into legislation. Under the new plan, the Prime Minister would offer to rewrite the government's withdrawal bill to enshrine a customs arrangement in law, so any deal reached with May could not be ripped up by her successor. According to senior sources, Tory negotiators have told Labour that the government would accept UK membership of a customs union, pictured, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn The moves are certain to trigger fury among pro-Brexit Tory MPs. The parties have also discussed offering MPs a vote on whether to hold a second referendum. Neither the Tory or Labour leadership want the public to vote again on Brexit, and they hope a Commons defeat will banish the idea forever. A source in the cross-party talks said, it was offered with a nod and wink, if we unite to vote it down, a second referendum can be put to bed once and for all. With just four days to go until an emergency Brussels summit on whether to further delay Britain's exit. Mrs May warned that Brexit would slip through our fingers if she did not cut a deal with Mr Corbyn, Philip Hammond signalled the government was ready to climb down by declaring there were no red lines for a Labour deal. Former Brexit Secretary Dominic Robb told the Mail on Sunday that Mrs May's negotiations with Jeremy Corbyn risked handing the keys to Downing Street to an avowed Marxist and destroying Brexit. Tory associations warn they would go on strike in May's council elections if the PM cuts a deal with Labour and clings to office, as a Tory minister warned fighting the EU elections would be a suicide note for the party. Tory MPs swung behind the unity leadership ticket of pro-Brexit Boris Johnson and pro-Remain Amber Rudd, which they have codenamed Bamber, allies of Home Secretary Sajid Javid produced polling data to claim he is in a better position than Mr Johnson to win a general election. International Trade Secretary Liam Fox was accused of making a undiplomatic remark about French President Macron's marriage after last week's cabinet meeting. In a boost for the cross-party talks, a snap poll by Labour found 42% of voters backed the parties cooperating, with 27% opposed Labour, Tory, Remain and Leave voters all backed the talks by significant margins. According to sources close to the negotiations, which took place over the phone on Saturday rather than through face-to-face -face meetings, Labour have indicated they don't mind how the customs union is described as long as it conforms to the World Trade Organization definition of it being an arrangement with a common external tariff apostrophe. Said one source, it must look like a duck and quack like a duck, but it doesn't have to be called a duck. This morning Rebecca Long Bailey MP told the Andrew Marshall that Labour had discussed how any changes to the Brexit agreement could be entrenched so that any potential future Conservative leader, such as Boris Johnson, would not be able to rip up any compromise, a so-called Boris-proof deal. She said a customs union was defined in international law in the proposals we have seen from the government so far and their direction of travel over the last two years have not been compliant with the definition of a customs union apostrophe. What we have on the table isn't a customs union, it certainly doesn't meet the criteria that many business organizations such as the CBI have been asking for, she said. 
On the prospect of a second referendum, Ms. Long Bailey said, We have asked the government whether they would consider complying with our policy position and as yet we haven't seen anything to suggest that they will. She indicated Labour could be prepared to revoke Article 50, cancelling Brexit, if the UK was heading towards a no deal Brexit on Friday. We have promised our party members and our constituents that we will do all we can to avoid a no deal situation and it's something that we would consider. Consider very, very strongly, she said. A Labour insider pointed to the fact Mr Corbyn last week supported Commons amendments backing a customs union that failed to include the word union, insisting they are not wedded to language apostrophe. Wording such as the benefits of a customs relationship or a comprehensive customs arrangement is understood to have been mooted for the agreement by Downing Street but is unlikely to fool Tory MPs. It is understood that Jeremy Corbyn has also been offered a lock mechanism, which would prevent any future pro-Brexit prime ministers such as Boris Johnson from unraveling the deal in what was seen as an overt display of goodwill towards the Labour Party. Chancellor Philip Hammond yesterday used a visit to Romania to declare there were no red lines in the talks. And in a further sign of a breakthrough, Mr Hammond said he was optimistic that we will reach some form of agreement and suggested that there would be an exchange of some more texts today. Downing Street insisted that this did not mean Mrs May's commitment to end freedom of movement was on the negotiating table, but markedly failed to reprimand Mr Hammond for his comments. Last night, abortive efforts by a loyalist minister Rory Stewart to get MPs to sign a letter supporting Mrs May's climb down were met with short shrift by furious colleagues. Former Brexit Secretary Dominic Robb told The Mail, on Sunday that Mrs May's negotiations with Jeremy Corbyn risked handing the keys to Downing Street to an avowed Marxist and destroying Brexit One backbencher said, Rory has asked us all to sign this brown-nosing letter. Everyone has told him to do one. Mr. Stewart's letter read, We are writing to express our support for the Cabinet's decision to open Brexit discussions with the opposition in the spirit of compromise, adding, These are not normal times. It is thought to have attracted few signatures. Meanwhile, Education Minister Nadim Zahawi said the situation needed to be resolved quickly in order to avoid the existential threat posed if the UK remained in the EU at the time of the European elections next month. He said that telling our constituents why we haven't been able to deliver Brexit would lead to a wipeout, adding, it would be, I think, a suicide note of the Conservative Party. Speaking as the negotiations continued, Mrs May said, I want the UK to leave the EU in an orderly way as soon as possible and that means leaving in a way that does not disrupt people's lives. If we cannot secure a majority among Conservative and UP MPs we have no choice.